Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the virtual Austin Public Library virtual potluck. Um, I'm Diana Lennon, Head of Adult Services at the library, and I am so excited everyone is here and everybody's going to be cooking. It's fantastic. And um, I'm so pleased to welcome once again Ashley Covelli of Big Flavors from Tiny Kitchen. And I'm just going to um, spotlight her. So let me just do that and then she can take it away. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Um, I know many of you, but for those of you who I don't, my name is Ashley. I've had um, a food and recipe website since 2006. It's called Big Flavors from a Tiny Kitchen. Um, I'm putting a link in the chat in case anybody wants to see my event schedule. We've got lots of great ones coming up for um, the Austin Library. And let's see, next month also one for the Rye Free Reading Room. Um, and so if you haven't been part of the virtual potluck before, um, every month we have a theme. And we have two programs. Once we talk about cookbooks and cooking tips and all that stuff around whatever the theme is. And then the second one, which is today, is um, cooking a recipe based on the theme. So um, yeah, we've got a good crowd today. I like seeing some of you cook along. If you have any questions, feel free to unmute um, or put it in the chat. If I don't catch it, Diana will. Um, we're very laid back. If you need me to stop talking super fast, tell me to slow it down. I, I can get a little, a little chit chatty, but I'm glad to have you here. If you are making tonight's recipe with us, we're making a Middle Eastern fatouche salad with homemade pita chips and sumac vinaigrette. Um, is everybody that's cooking along, were you able to find sumac? I know Cynthia got hers. Yes, Sherry. I'm just using lemon peel. Um, I okay. ordered yep. it didn't come in time. Okay. Yeah. So you can use, um, you can just use a little lemon zest and like, you'll probably need to add some salt, but you can taste it. It'll still be good, but then maybe once it comes in, you could try it again. Um, sumac, it's a Middle Eastern spice. It's in a lot of Persian restaurants. Um, they'll have like salt, pepper, and then sumac. It's ground uh, from a berry. And I got this giant container from locally at um, Shiraz in Elmsford. There's a Persian restaurant and right next door is a market. It's great. There's also Yaranoush is not too far from there in White Plains, but it's this like kind of chunky, grainy, um, and it's a little lemony and a lot of times there's salt in it. So whenever I use it, I usually taste whatever it is before adding salt because it doesn't often need it. Um, so that's sumac um, and I have a link to it in the, in the program PDF that you guys got with the uh, recipe cards and everything. So. Um, lots of options if you want to find it online. Occasionally you can find some of the ethnic spices at like a stop and shop or whatever, but this one's a little trickier. Um, okay, so if you're making the pita chips to go in this, we're going to preheat the oven to 400. Okay. And let's see, we're going to do two uh, pieces of like if you have a full size pita bread, um, two of them. I like the type with the pockets. If you got some that don't have pockets, that's fine. It just might take a little longer to get crispy because um, they'll be thicker. And if you have the mini pita bread, you could use, I think, usually like two minis is about the size of one normal size pita bread. So just double how many you're using. And then I just stack them up on top of each other. Can everybody see there's a there's an overhead view also so hopefully that's coming through right okay great so i'm going to stack them on top and i'm just going to you can use kitchen scissors if you want or a knife i'm just going to cut it in half you can make i usually do like in eighths so i cut it in half cut it in half again and then cut each of those in half you could also just tear it honestly if you want to um it's not going to be necessarily recognizable in the salad because we toss it together um but I also use these when I make like hummus or um, muhammara, which is a roasted red pepper and walnut dip that's got um, pomegranate molasses, which is another really fun Middle Eastern ingredient if you haven't used Yum, by the way, to that dip. Yeah. Oh, you liked that, right? Yeah, it's so good. It's very, I make it very garlicky. You can tone the garlic back a bit if you like, but um, so I'm just going to leave these off to the side while we make the seasoned oil for them. Um, and then we'll peel them open. 
like that. So they're halves. Um, I'm going to get a big bowl. And we're just going to toss a couple things together. And this is just like a fairly basic seasoned uh, pita chip, but it's got like enough flavor to take like a plain hummus or whatever and make it really nice. So we're going to do in a bowl three tablespoons of olive oil. I am, I'll measure. I was going to not measure, but then I, I decided I'll measure. <laughs> You could also, if you don't have olive oil, you could use like avocado oil or grapeseed oil. You just don't want anything that's got like a lot of flavor. Like you wouldn't want to use sesame oil or something like that. Um, I'm going to add in a teaspoon of dried parsley. If you've ever been also, um, Calustians in New York City has tons of great ethnic spices. And it's just like, it's a fun place to see. They have like, any, any Indian ingredient you could need. If you need like dried curry leaves, they have all sorts of stuff. Um, and also Penzi's, uh, there's one in, in Connecticut. I can't remember exactly which town it's in, um, maybe Norwalk, but they, Norwalk. Also have, yeah, they, um, they also have a lot of spices and they carry this. So we've got one teaspoon of dried parsley and we're gonna do half a teaspoon of dried oregano and half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And then a quarter teaspoon of paprika. Oh, I took out smoked. I don't want smoked paprika. Not, not in this. It would be good probably, but that'll add a lot of flavor. All right. So we've got our olive oil, parsley, oregano, salt, ground paprika, and then just a couple cracks of black pepper. And then we're gonna whisk it together. And that's all that's going on the pita chips. Um, and I use this like comically small whisk because my husband teases me. I just like it, it's like, it's cute. My son likes it too. Um, I do have full size whisks, but. Okay, this isn't having trouble getting in. Hopefully that worked. Um, so once this is whisked together, I'm just separating all of the pita chips and putting them in here. So I'm just like ripping them in half. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, basically we're baking them in one layer um, in the oven. If you wanted to double this recipe, I would recommend, um, I would recommend doing it even if two sheets will fit in the oven, I would recommend doing it in two separate batches because when it gets closer to the top element of the stove, sometimes they curl up and get like a little burnt on the edges, at least in my oven, so. Um, but this is plenty for this particular salad. And I mentioned before, but if you are making this today, but you're gonna serve it another day, don't toss the pita chips in until right before you serve because they'll get soggy and then there was not much point in toasting them. Um, okay to pre-toast them though, Ashley? Yeah, absolutely. You just want to let them fully cool off before you um, store them in an airtight container. I've stored them in like a stasher bag, like a, a Ziploc um, or in a Tupperware with a lid. Just you want to make sure that they fully cool so that they're not like steaming inside of there. Um, So I'm just tossing this. It's like a little kind of finicky to get it coated, but we'll get there. Hopefully Susan's able to join in there. And sometimes I'm trying to do this with tongs to be like neat about it, but I'm just going to get in there with my hands because it'll help. It'll help coat things a little better. And they don't have to be evenly coated. You just want to try to get it distributed around there. Susan, did you get in all right? I hope. Yeah, uh, yes, I got in. Thank you. Oh, it, welcome. Sometimes I have trouble. Thank you. No problem. Thanks for joining. I'm glad this worked out for you. Okay. So once your chips or your pita bread pieces are coated, I'm just going to take a baking sheet. Okay. 
gonna pour it out. And sometimes I'll scrape, like if there's extra seasonings in here, I'll just kind of like scrape them out and pat them on. And then you can also sit, you could use the same bowl. If you have a big enough bowl, you could use the same bowl that you do this for your salad. That would work too. So I'm just kind of like arranging them into a somewhat even like single layer. If they're overlapping a bit, that's okay. I like recipes that like won't punish you if you like goof it up a little bit. This works a little better for, for my lifestyle with, you know, distractions and family and kids and pets and all that stuff. So if everybody, I can't, how's it going over there, Joanna? You good? And Sherry, you doing all right? Are you not doing the pita chips part? I'm not doing the chips today. Got it, got it. Yeah, this would be great. I know Cynthia was mentioning bulgur. It would be great with like um, any sort of cooked, cooled grain that you like would be really nice in there. Faro or farro, however you pronounce it, that would be really good in there because it's nice and like chewy, maybe like wheat berries. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna take this and we're gonna put it in the oven for about eight minutes. And so we're looking for them to be golden brown and crispy and sometimes they won't seem super crispy when they come out of the oven but once they cool down they'll get a little crispier alexa set a timer for eight minutes so if your oven tends to bake on the faster side like if you bake cookies and you notice they bake um quickly when you do recipes that you always have to go down to an earlier time or a lesser time you could check on it a minute or two earlier. Uh, all right, so that's all it is for the pita chips. And again, those are great with any number of different dips. Um, and they're really easy and they hold up for several days as long as they're airtight. Um, next, we're gonna make the sumac vinaigrette and this, the recipe makes more than we need for the salad, just so you know. So we're only gonna use a third of a cup for the salad and it should make about three quarters of a cup. So just letting you know, you can save it in a bottle in the fridge um, because of the olive oil, it'll probably solidify a bit. So if you wanna use it for something else, take it out and let it sit on the counter for a little bit so it gets um, reliquifies. Um, all right, so into a bowl, we're gonna add a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. Has anybody, has everybody had this type of salad before? I'm just curious. It's not like super, super popular. Um, it's just really nice and fresh. Um, I've certainly never made a salad dressing with sumac before. Yeah, I don't know if it's a thing. I just thought it would be good because I really like the, um, I like sumac on uh, like kebab and like Persian, like chicken kebab or um, lamb. Um, and I sprinkle it over like the basmati rice and I pretty much sprinkle it on everything on my plate when I do that type of thing. Um, so yeah, I thought it would be nice and especially cause it's kind of lemony. Where is my lemon? Yeah, oh, here it is. Like it's a tiny kitchen, it couldn't have gone far. Um, a quarter cup of fresh squeezed lemon juice. And if you've been to my class before, you're gonna be like, all right, I know what she's gonna say. But if you haven't, and this might blow your mind, I'm happy to help. Um, if you have a lemon squeezer like this, which you do not need, you can use your hands, catch the seeds underneath, you can use a fork to kind of like pry it around. But if you have one of these, and I used to put it in this way because the curve kind of went with the shape of the lemon, but I realized you're supposed to put it in this way and this compresses your lemon and it really gets the juice out. Like you pretty much have a dried little puck of lemon left over. It's like not much. If you happen to be making cocktails or mocktails and you want to have a rim, like a salted rim or sugared rim, this is perfect for that because it's still like juicy enough that you can just like rub it around the edge of your glass. Just as a note. <laughs> um, so we're, we're doing a quarter cup. I also read recently that you can, um, you can peel the like, oh, I totally put my pita chips in before my oven was fully preheated. So mine might take a little longer. Um, 
I read that you can peel lemon zest and if you have a dehydrator, you can dehydrate it and then grind it up into a powder and make like a powdered lemon. I'm really interested in trying that sometime. Like if I wasn't doing this for a class, I would probably take the time to pull. Do you, Ashley, do you think that that's what dried lime is? The, um... the Persian dried lime? Is that just no, those are yeah. actually like actual hockey puck circle lime. They're they're really weird to work with. It's um there's a really popular Persian dish called gourmet sabzi, and you, you put those in in it and it just like you leave them in whole. I think you might have to like kind of prick them so that they release some of the liquid, but it's yeah, they're like whole shriveled, like brown lines it looks really weird but it adds a very unique flavor um but i know like i guess that might be how they make dried lemon peel and dried like orange zest that you can buy like in the baking aisle um but i bought a dehydrator because of this program actually because i found a dehydrating cookbook at the library that was really interesting and yes yeah, so i like trying dif different dehydrating things um, okay, so half a cup of extra virgin olive oil, quarter cup of lemon juice. We're going to do three teaspoons of ground sumac. My dad lives in Iran. He says you call it sumac and like really, he really, really emphasizes the k at the end. So like my son likes to like to joke around about that. Um, three teaspoons is the same as a tablespoon. I don't know why. I probably scaled it down. That might be why I wrote it like that. Um, and then a half teaspoon of cinnamon and cinnamon is really interesting in Middle Eastern food because like I do a Persian meatloaf and the little bit of cinnamon in there really like adds something like warming and interesting to it. So I thought that would be nice in here. And then we're not going to add salt yet. We're going to whisk it together and you can taste it. And if you feel like it needs a little salt, go for it. But just remember there's if you're going to use feta cheese. There's going to be saltiness from that. The pita chips have salt on them, so it probably doesn't need it. But you do, however, whatever your heart tells you. <laughs> um, so that's all there is to the vinaigrette, and it's like kind of like a pretty creamy brown color. So I'm going to measure out uh, one third of a cup of this. Ashley, when you're substituting with the lemon zest, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm sure it's not an equal to equal, but do you yeah. know approximately what it is? I would, I, I've never actually done it. I was actually, I was searching for like, how can you substitute sumac? And it's like a really tricky thing. I would probably for this recipe, I would just zest one lemon and then add a couple pinches of salt and just see how it tastes. Cause like, if I taste this right now, definitely going to be sour from the lemon, but yeah, it's like sour and it's like a little bit salty, but you'll have the lemon juice also. So I think that the lemon zest will just add like a little nice extra burst of that flavor. It's totally ironic, but I made, we rarely make lamb like once a year and I had uh -huh. lamb last week and I decided I would try this, what I thought was a sort of outrageous recipe and it called for sumac. Get out and of here. That's so funny. And then I opened your thing the next day. I was like, okay, this is bizarre. And weird, and I had to substitute the lemon zest, and it was delicious. Yes. But I had no idea what it was supposed to taste like, so I didn't know. Yeah. What it's just, it's nice. Even just like sprinkling an over grilled meat is just really, really. It adds, it adds something interesting to it. Um, so that's all there is for the dressing. Like I'll probably put the rest in a little jar like this, and then when I take it out of the fridge to use it, I'll let it sit, and then once it uh, softens up a bit, I'll just shake it to re emulsify. Um, and now all we're going to do is chop a bunch of veggies and drop them into the bowl while our pita chips are going. I actually need to turn on the fan going in the window because it's getting a little toasty in here. And I don't want today to be the first day my smoke detector goes off during class. That would be not ideal, but okay. Um, we're, oh, let me check the pita chips. Alexa, stop. And this gives them enough of a chance to cool down also while we're, while we're chopping. So you can see they're brown in spots. Some of it looks dark, but that's okay. Cause like the, 
that dark part is like nice and crispy and um excuse me ma'am it's not cat food um they might not feel super oh yeah these are pretty crispy um once they cool they'll feel even firmer same with tortilla chips a lot of times they kind of crisp up as they sit out and you can always put them back in for more but you don't want to like overcook so while those are cooling we're going to take um a 12 ounce package of grape tomatoes or a pint these numbers aren't super specific we're just having a big bowl of veggies basically with the sauce um and i just do them in half this is another one of the things i learned this like probably 20 years ago from a rachel ray show she took the little deli lid containers and you have like grape tomatoes things of that size you put them in so the lip is up so it's holding them it's like kind of cradling them put them in here and then the other one you do lip side down on top and then you slice kind of like put a little bit of pressure on there and you slice through and then it chops everything in half like right away for you so i always have these little deli lids every once in a while i'll like um but that was kind of kind of high up um everyone oh, yeah, I, missed, I missed that hack show me again it's yeah so the lip side is up so it holds them and you just do a single layer you can do this for like pitted olives grapes um just fill a layer and then this one lip side down so you're basically like holding it in and then you just put your hand flat on top apply a little bit of pressure so it doesn't slide and you just saw right through the middle. And then they're all like perfectly evenly cut in half. You don't have to use cherry or grape tomatoes for this. You could use, especially in the summer, this would be great with like some really beautiful like heirloom tomatoes or, you know, um, I find Campari tomatoes, they, they come in a clam shell. Those ones are reliably, it's a, I think it's a Canadian company sunset that makes them, but they're um, reliably good tasting all year because you know sometimes the like roma tomatoes and stuff are looking a little sad in the grocery store so we're just like chopping things dropping them in um we've got the tomatoes we're going to do an english cucumber if you have a, a cucumber that has seeds feel free to de-seed i'm going to leave the skin on this one um some people uh, my husband included on a normal type, not the English cucumber, but on like the standard run of the mill cucumbers, um, the, the skin can sometimes give them a little like heartburn or whatever. So he'll do, um, I'll peel those ones, but these don't bother. Um, and whatever size you want to cut them, it doesn't really matter. I said it's like about three cups from one cucumber, but again, whatever size you want. Like the cherry tomatoes are fairly big size pieces, like half inch or an inch. So I just kind of make everything similarly sized. And I'm just, you know, cutting them into manageable pieces and then chunks. You could also like, if you wanted it to be more like tabbouleh kind of texture, you could really like finely chop everything. Um, then you'd have these big heat of chip chunks. And I don't know if that would like make it look a little weird but I uh, I was telling Diana earlier I was at Wegmans yesterday buying ingredients for this and they have like the three packs of cucumbers and I just like I can't pass those up because we eat a lot of a lot of cucumbers and in, in my house like they're I don't know they're just I feel like they're such good snacks I like them in like yogurt sauces um I, you could sprinkle them with like chili lime seasoning or tahin is really nice for like a kind of sweet and salty thing. Um, if you may, if you were doing like a big kind of Middle Eastern spread, you could do this salad and you could do hummus and you could have like some cucumbers to dip in the hummus. Um, yeah, they're just super versatile. I have another recipe that's like a um, falafel spiced chickpea puree that, um, I do on little wheel, uh, like little discs of cucumber. That's really nice. 
and my neighbor's kids ate them willingly and really liked them. <laughs> so I was like, I'll consider that a win. Like a couple picky eaters and they all, all dug them. Oh, while we're just chopping things, um, our next virtual potluck um, is our cookbook discussion. It's Tuesday, February 8th at 7 p.m. Eastern. So when we do the cookbook ones, we do it a little later so that I can eat beforehand and not be hangry while we're talking about all these delicious cookbooks. Um, and our theme is bowls. So different foods and bowls. That was actually this month's theme of salads and dressings and that month's theme um, and the following one, which is eggs. Those were all suggested by someone who came to a previous cooking class. So we're always open to suggestions and the types of things that you want to learn to make um, or just to talk about. But there's tons of great books at the library um, about different bowl recipes. I have a lot of them checked out right now. Um, so that's February 8th at 7 p.m. And then on February 22nd, that's another Tuesday at 6 p.m., we're gonna make toasted farro grain bowls with roasted winter veggies. And that's um, a recipe that I make that you can do an egg however you'd like to do it on top. If you want, I like doing like a soft boiled egg on it, but a fried egg would be good. No egg would be fine and it would be vegan if you're, um, or if you just don't like eggs. Um, and the, the veggies can be versatile. You can kind of pick what you like, but. Um, all right, so we've got tomatoes, cucumbers, about six radishes. I just cut them in half and finely sliced, uh, thinly sliced them. Um, February, uh, I'm gonna put, I'll put this link in the chat again. Oh, oh yeah, no, that's you, Diana. I thought you were asking. <laughs> Never mind. yes, what she said. I thought that was a question about the date. Um, so I might not do quite six. Probably gonna do like four. I really like the like, um, the really colorful French radishes at like that you can find at the farmer's market or more in the spring, I guess. Um, they're a little milder, like the, the, the light pink and the white and the purple ones, I think are a little milder than these kind of vibrant red um, radishes, but they, they have like a peppery bite um, if you haven't tried them before. And in a lot of Persian restaurants, they'll serve a like an appetizer course with some lavash. It's like a Persian flatbread kind of it's thinner than non. Um, it's thinner than half of one of these pitas, and it usually comes in like a big square or rectangle. Um, but they'll serve a little platter of that with just like wedges of radish, usually um, curly parsley for some reason. I don't know why not flat leaf, but curly parsley and like pieces of feta. And you just kind of like wrap a little of the herbs and the feta and the radish in. You just like have it little bites of it while you're waiting for your food. Um, it's really tasty. But I like, I think radishes are nice. I don't know, I feel like they don't get used as much as they could. Um, people are maybe scared of them a bit, but they're nice, like thinly sliced like this or a little thin matchsticks on tacos. And they add a really nice pop of color. Um, there is a recipe that I saw um, somebody online, she did, and I tried it and it was really good. She did, um, melted some like really nice butter, like a, some fancy, fancy French butter, and then halved the radishes. She dipped them in the butter and then put them on a lined, um, like a parchment lined baking sheet to cool in the freezer. But before the butter set, she, oh no, she froze the radishes first. That's what it was. So you freeze the tray of the radish halves first. And then when you dip them in the melted butter, it hardens really fast. So you dip them in the melted butter, you put it back on the sheet and you sprinkle. I used smoked salt when I did it. And it's just like this little, like it gets this like shell kind of from the butter. It was really interesting. Her, um, this was somebody that I follow on Instagram. Her handle is uh, Lena, L-E-N-A, Lena's Kitchen Blog, I believe. She's out in Oregon, I, I think. Um, but yeah, I thought that was a really cool one. And those, like, if you get the really pretty radishes, it's nice, a nice little addition to like a dinner party or brunch. So, got our radishes. 
you could also, if you have like the multicolored tomatoes, the, you know, they have packs that are like orange and yellow and red, that would be really pretty in this too. All right. So that's all the veggies. Then we're going to do a half cup each of chopped parsley and mint. So Wegmans did not have any like bundles of mint. So I'm going to use these two sad little containers. It might be about a, it might be about a half cup. If there's any really big stems, you can um, pull those out, but you don't have to get, you can cut some of the tender ones, it's fine. And you can cut the mint and the parsley together if you want, or you can do them separately. I'm just getting rid of this like giant stem here. Oh yeah, thank you for that. That's her website. She's got a lot of, I haven't tried many of her recipes, but they all look very good. I know she sometimes does like keto recipes, um, a lot of very like fancy for entertaining looking type of recipes. Um, and if you, you could, you could mix up the herbs that are in here too, if you want, um, it doesn't have to be, I just like how mint and parsley work together in here. It just, I feel like the mint makes it really fresh and mint always is nice with cucumbers. Um, so I'm just, Chopping it doesn't have to be super even or fine. Unless you want it to be, if you want it to be, then it can. And hopefully it smells really good. This would actually be, I think Cynthia was talking about making a soup with hers um, when she serves this tomorrow, but this would be really nice with like a, so yeah, I made a Persian tomato tomato lentil soup. Is it was it the recipe that I found? Um, or a different one? Most most likely. Um, was it was it? Did you taste it yet? It was delish. Yeah. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, yeah it also um, had some sumac in it. I'm sorry. It had sumac in it. Yeah. And mint and parsley. I mean, those are common. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it's, you know, if you're making something that calls for like a partial bundle of fresh herbs, like I usually, when I'm on my game, I try to plan to also make other recipes that use it so that I don't waste half a bunch of herbs. Um, I also, I, somebody gave me, I think it was the Hudson Valley Food Waste Challenge. They had a tip about storing fresh herbs and I've tried it and it does seem to work a little bit better. Um, Basically, they, they said to take a tall deli container, like the ones that the lids go on, um, the lids that we were using for the tomatoes. So you take one of those and you put a little water in it. This isn't one of those, this is a, a glass one, but same principle. Um, and you put some water in it and you stick your herbs upright in it and you change the water every couple days. Um, I, have some, I have some curly parsley in my fridge that Let's see how it's held up because it's been in there for like two weeks, maybe. It's probably pretty sad. Let's see. I didn't use it for this recipe just because I want to take sad looking parsley out, but like that's really not not bad for I, it's been. I think two and a half weeks that I've had this, so like maybe three times now I've taken this out just dumped the water and put new clean water in it I guess it might be because they're submerged in water but also they're upright maybe that has something to do with why it seems to work a little better I don't know Ashley but, you don't put plas a plastic bag over it you just leave it open I, did, I didn't I don't really have any plastic I mean I have the reusable one but yeah I think the, I know I've seen that too where you put the plastic bag over the top um I don't know I find that it gets a little not slimy, but it can like color and whatever, but that's interesting. I've never tried it just open. I'm going to try it. Thank you. Try, yeah, try it. Um, and like I said, I have, I have, this is the, I can't find this size of plastic ones at the store anymore. Usually it's by like the olive bar and I haven't seen them lately because I was going to, I was going to, you know, you have to buy soup. Well, yeah, but they have like the cartons, you know, like the, yeah, I've been, I've been looking, but I do have these these weck jars. I use them when I when I make yogurt and they have lids. So I feel like it'll probably work similarly. Um, all right, so we've got about half a cup of each parsley and mint. And then we're gonna do four green onions or, you know, sometimes green onions are giants. So two 
or if you really like onion a lot, use more, but think about four normal sized ones. Um, the greens and the whites, just gonna thinly slice them. I usually just take off if there's any like wilty bits at the end and then I put it with my stuff that I compost, but there's a lot of recipes that have you use the whites and like separate the greens and then they don't use them. And I don't understand because I think they're really good. Um, but in some recipes like that you're, if you're sauteing stuff or frying stuff, the, the, the white parts at the bottom and the light greens are nice to saute in the pan. And then you can like garnish it with the light, the dark green parts. So this is just a lot of chopping really, but the, um, this would be nice. I feel like on the side of some grilled fish or chicken also maybe shrimp. Um, and like I said, if you're making it ahead of time, just keep your dressing and your pita chips separately until you're gonna have, until you're gonna serve it. So we've got a big, 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 big bowl of veggies here and herbs. Um, I, if you want to do feta, I usually do it on top at the end. I tend to separate it just cause um, it's not, not everybody in my house likes it. Um, goat cheese would be nice on it too. But I just am gonna break a, break one into a couple pieces because I think I bought one that's a whole chunk. Um, Yaranoush in White Plains has delicious feta, and they have a case up front by the cash register, and they have um, like from different areas different types of fresh feta in in like a big like tub of water and you can just like pick your chunk of feta. It's, I mean, they, they pick it for you, but it's really nice. And you can absolutely buy it pre-crumbled too, but this, the kind that's in the water tends, I think to last a little longer. But um, the, the owners at that particular store, they're really good with like talking, you, talking to you about like the different types. Also Second Mouse Cheese Shop in Pleasantville. They have some interesting types of feta in the little refrigerated case. And that store is just great anyway. But so I'm just kind of like breaking it into haphazard pieces. So I have it to garnish at the end. And without without the feta or with vegan feta, which I've I've seen, I'm actually kind of curious to try. There's like a tofu feta recipe. Um, I believe it uses nutritional yeast to make it salty. I like I, I like trying these things just so I just so I know and can recommend or not recommend them depending. Um, and I think that's it. We're gonna, um, gonna just give this that, rest. You asked for two ounces. Is that like a half a cup what you're doing right now with the feta? Oh, I, hmm, let's see. I'm gonna measure in a cup. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you how much it is. I think I just was, I figure like if this serves for like a half ounce, each is responsible, but um, I probably put more than that on my own. Yeah, this is about half a cup. Yeah. So yeah, like this for four. I mean, it's a, it's a light, it's a light dusting of feta. Feel free to add, <laughs> add more or less at your, at your will. Um, all right. So I'm just whisking this, uh, third of a cup of our sumac vinaigrette, pour it over the top. And I like to mix all of this together first and then I'll add, I'm only gonna put the pita chips in one portion of it since um, my husband's not home and I don't want them to get soggy. But if you were serving this all at once, you could um, toss, it all, uh, toss it all together right before you serve it with the pita chips and everything. Um, and if you aren't sure, cause not everybody's into feta. Sorry, I'm looking for my other salad hand. Um, if you're not, everybody's into feta. So a lot of times if I'm using it, I'll, I'll put it off to the side. Um, I don't know. I don't know where that one is. We'll use tongs. Um, I'll put it off to the side so that people can just add it if they like it, but you can add it when you're serving. So just kind of getting everything 
coated. Um, if you want to taste it to see if you think it needs a little salt, um, you can. The, again, the pita chips are a little salty. Okay, so that's nice and coated. And then I'm going to take out a separate portion for myself. Ooh, this one might, might be good. It's kind of like a Middle Eastern canzanella. It's like this kind of reminds me of a canzanella. So I'm going to take some of that. How many things can I cram onto this cutting board? <laughs> it's, I actually had somebody locally here um, stopped by recently and she saw my kitchen in person and she was like, oh, you, you really weren't joking. It is very small. I said, yeah, she said, the way you set up the camera, it makes it look much bigger than it is. I was like, yeah, it's, it's legitimately a small, small space. So then I'm just going to take, because I'm having about a quarter of this, I'm just going to take about a quarter of the pita chips and you can just crumble them up right on top of there. And if any of them feel like a little soft, you can um, pop them back in the oven. Like this one's like a little bit soft, so you could put it back in the oven if you want, or you could just, it'll get a little soggy in there anyway, but you could just snack on it. Um, and then I'm going to toss this too, since I'm doing it separately, but get it kind of dispersed in there. I'm going to top it with um, one quarter of this feta, <laughs> Cynthia, <laughs> just a quarter. <laughs> um, and that's it. It's, um, it's a really nice, I think it's really nice for summer. Um, I didn't want to do like a potato salad for the winter because um, technically the salad would have been a little more comforting, but um, that is it. Does anybody have any questions? And how's it going over there? I see Joanna still cooking and Sherry, how's it good? Do you have your, um, your non pita, whatever you were using? It smells oh, lovely. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, it smells really nice. Yeah, the kitchen smells amazing right now. Oh, I'm so glad. Um, definitely let me know what you think. And um, next, mm -mm -mm. the next one is Tuesday, February 8th at seven o'clock. We're talking about bowls, cookbooks for anything, food in a bowl. There's a lot, of, I have like a lot of grain bowl cookbooks, but also like soups, technically bowls and food, you know, that would count also. And you can bring cookbooks that you own, or if you have any, um, you want to go to your library. I know Osming has a lot of cookbooks. I'm sure Green Book Greenberg probably has a lot yeah. of cookbooks. Chappaqua has a ton of cookbooks. Um, and you can, I don't know how, how much you guys put holds on library books, but I do it a lot. Um, I have some I need to pick up actually still. But um, you can, on the website, you can search for books, you can place a hold. And even if it's not at your local library, they'll take it from Chappaqua or Dobbs Ferry and they'll deliver it to your library. And then you can pick it all up. Oh, I'm so glad, um, LR and BR, I hope you enjoy. Um, so that's the bowls cookbook discussion Tuesday, February 22nd at six, we're going to make the toasted farro grain bowls with roasted winter veggies. And then I have, um, in between those two programs, I have one with the rye free reading room, um, a taco night. I, I think I may have done this class with this group before, but it's, um, roasted sweet potato and black bean tacos, um, with the cilantro chimichurri. It's really tasty. I know. Um, that. yeah, that's like I'm one good. of my favorite recipes and it's so pretty and meat eaters don't hate it, which is awesome. Like they're not like Ew, vegetarian tacos. Um, so that and restaurant style guacamole. So I put the link in the chat to like my full roster. I have some like teen classes. Um, I don't know how many of you have teens at home, but there's a couple of teen classes coming up and yeah. Does anybody have any questions, requests? Oh, just a quick question. So if I'm going to have some salad now and my daughter is not going to have it for like an hour and a half, so yeah. just put the dressing aside, like don't dress you, the whole thing? You could dress it, just don't put the pita chips in hers. Okay. I think it would be fine to be dressed because like an hour and a half, it's not going to get, like the tomatoes aren't going to get soggy. There's not like lettuce in here or anything too delicate um, okay. and the herbs will be fine. But yeah, and just- if I wanted to save some for lunch tomorrow, maybe put that aside then. You can, I mean, I'm- I'm, I've dressed all of this and all this part's going to go in the fridge and it'll still be fine tomorrow. So okay. just depends if you want to do the work of 
you know, redressing yeah. it tomorrow. But yeah, <laughs> definitely not no on the pita chips though. Um, yeah. It, yeah, it smells delicious. Oh, I'm so glad. I hope you enjoy. All right. Yeah. That looks awesome. I can't wait to try it. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Thank you, oh, Ashley. Joanna, that looks great. Oh, beautiful. Oh, Joanna. Oh, nice. I should have said if you do, if you did make it and you do take a picture and you're on social media, you can um, tag me at Big Flavors. And if you want to use hashtag cook Big Flavors, I love seeing my food in your kitchens. It's so cool. Like the, the fact that we're going to like have the same dinner tonight is just really fun to me. Um, or if you don't do social media and you take a picture, you want to email it, you can email it back to Diana or to me if you'd like. Um, I would love to see. Yeah, so, sure. Thank yeah, you. Thanks all for, for the joining. shout out to Library too, Ashley. For I, I am like all the legitimately great such a library fan girl. I, I, I love it. The, if you have young kids, um, oh, you're so welcome. Um, if you have young kids, like it's such a great, it was a lifesaver for me with a toddler having library programs to go to and um and like you pay it's like you're paying for it with your taxes like and it's a great service and i know austin's a beautiful library beautiful. Um, greenberg looks beautiful yeah 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 definitely come visit us we're definitely open yeah i, I just put in a link to our um it's a long link i didn't rename it or anything but it's our um virtual potluck lip guide that has all of the recipes and the videos and upcoming events and everything that um, we do with Ashley. And it's great. It's great to, you know, if you miss one, you can go back and watch the video. And, I'm so you know, glad, Mary. That, that was such a game changer for me when I, like, I, I've never gone back. I'm like, I'm always going to have these two lids. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, why do we have these lids? I told my husband, do not throw them out. <laughs> they, yeah. they live in this drawer. Um, that's and, my favorite tip. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> and also the, um, so like for this one, we did the, um, oh, Calustians. Um, K -L -U -S. Oh, yeah. um, and they have online ordering also, but it's a cool place to go if you just want to like peruse really fun spices. Um, so for the cookbook discussion, I put together a PDF. Um, it'll be, it'll be ready in like a week or so. Um, but It'll have cookbook recommendations. It'll have recipes around whatever the theme is and some local shopping resources um, or restaurants and stuff. So, yeah. Thanks, Ashley. Thank you so much. I love seeing all your smiling faces. It's so nice. <laughs> Enjoy your dinner party. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Rich. Thank you. Thank you.